Good morning, YouTube. What a beautiful, beautiful morning it is. The sun just cleared behind the hills and the temperature is minus four and a half. Should be rising to just about zero or whatever you call it. Just below or above freezing, zero degrees. Uh, the sun should be out and the weather forecast calls for a beautiful winter day in Denmark. We have snow. Not a lot. We had a lot of trouble with snow in the northern part of Denmark because every time we get snow we are not prepared. We are not Sweden, we are not Austria, we are not Canada. We are not Alaska, we are not anything. So every time the snow falls, Denmark stops. Um, we are not geared to, to handle large amounts of snow. But this is the second drizzle we've had over the last three or four weeks. And today should be a beautiful day. I came here today to to mark the end of a long, tedious journey of an axe. The tedious journey or the, the bad journey or the tiring journey. Uh, uh, I'm not going to put blame or fault or anything. You work with old steel that has been abused. You work with live material from some parts of the world traveling to other parts of the world and sometimes just like when you, if you buy a new phone or if you buy a new PC or if you buy a new car from the factory you get one of those models made on a Monday and I have worked on this axe with skilled make with a skilled maker and uh, there's no fault to blame or no fault to or no fingers to point um, it, it just didn't for this axe work out so I changed something and this axe has seen quite a few miles in a box um, it's right over there uh, but I'm, I'm not going to show you now, I'm just going to go to camp. Of course I'm going to show you. My heightest Forest, forest tool on a 26 or 25 inch keen timber and tool hickory haft. Beautiful custom made wedge sheath from my friend Jimmy in Denmark. my Viking battle axe. Now this is this is the axe I take if I go winter camping here and and if if everything here is is wet and frozen and I have to to break up larger piece of firewood I take something like this. This would normally be, be used as a uh, as a tool in Australia for working in the woods for splitting very very dense wood um, it's a complete wedge profile and the maker of this and the edge and the story uh, will pick up when we get to camp um, I'm very happy and I'm very proud to have it back and should be here for many years to come.
I was here 14 days ago when the first snow fell from the sky and the weather today is much more cold and the ground is frozen. We have had the wettest fall or the wettest year in Danish history ever recorded. So when I came here 14 days ago, everywhere under the snow was large grey pools of water not seeping into the ground because it was so overflown with water from rain that everything here was just mud. Uh, if I remember in the edit I'll show you a picture and you know what I'm talking about. I've been coming here since 2017 and I have never seen that large puddles of water here at camp. This piece of the forest is uh, is placed uh, higher than, than the rest so it should not be there should not be that much water here but I was drenched in water last time. So today's video I, I planned one thing and if, if I succeed uh, if I succeed it, it, it will add a bit of um, a bit of action <laughs> to the video um, but I wanted to come here and I wanted to address and tell you the story about how my highest Tasmanian axe came to be in the shape that it is now because man oh man but first I figured it would be wise for me to get the fire going and see about building some warmth uh, I don't know if we're filming here if we are I'll keep the top away due to, to the wonderful lighting and if not I'll get the top up so I can warm up a bit in here but let's get unpacked and let's get the fire going So, it's, a, <laughs> it's always rough carrying 55, 60 kilos of firewood halfway through the forest, but if you're camping and you have an, a firewood source that is made from smaller and thinner timber um, a hack could be carrying a roll of paracord jute twine I use this this is hemp cord or jute twine um, or bank line bank line is the lightest I find paracord to be the best for tying I find jute twine to be the cheapest um, if you carry a roll of cordage that is disposable for you uh, or if you do Canadian jam knots using paracord or bank line you can when carrying three logs or three uh, what's it called long pieces of firewood back to camp you can tie them together at the top middle part and bottom and when you come back Use your knife, your axe, keep your legs safe. So, 
the star of the show. But before we get talking, let's crack some firewood. And to honor my new guest, I have replaced my firewood chopping station. This has been standing here for a bit over a year, leaning against a tree just behind my top, and I think it's ready. So, the story behind this demon, and if during my story I have to relocate due to the fact that all the smoke from the entire fire is coming my way, um, I will do so. Normally, I would sit and hold this and tell you everything there is to know about it, but um, this thing is very, very, very sharp. Very sharp. And even after all this, 
I've held, I've held a few items. My brother Joe from Canada, he made one of them. My friend Zach, Keen Timber and Tool, he makes the rest of them. And my friend Oliver from Denmark, he does very sharp axes as well. <laughs> um, very. So sitting here holding this could potentially end up costing me a nick in my finger. So let's see. How that's going to work. That should be okay. So, a while back I did a video called My First Tassie featuring this axe hung on a completely different and completely more curved and more creatively made handle. Um, and I took the axe here, I swung it, it turned out very nice, it was a super powerful tool. Uh, I took it winter camping. Uh, what should I say? I took it winter camping a very short period of time after and I experienced that the head had come loose. So the axe went back to its maker in the UK, had the handle refitted, came back to me, came loose once more uh, and we took a more uh, investigative uh, way of, of looking at it. Um, cut off the handle, shipped it back, did a new handle, hung it very tightly. Um, that handle came back and was beautiful. More slim, more, more like, like, more like a workhorse, a, a working axe rounded corners, very nice to hold. Um, but that handle also came loose. Uh, I fixed it here in Denmark um, with a friend of mine. We drove two or three oak dowels five centimeters down the head, ten, 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 ten millimeter dowels in a seven or eight millimeter head, expanding the wood inside the eye um, but it, it didn't hold we I think we even drove in a, a cross wedge as well it, it didn't hold um, so I removed the handle and held the head in my hand thinking screw it I'm just gonna I'm just gonna sell it, get some money uh, to to help me on um, to help me on my next adventure. Um, and I'm going to pause you for a second, have a sip of my epically dark uh, Danish IPA, uh, and I'm going to stoke the fire because I I did a type of fire that burns out in the middle and I need to refeed it. So hold on for just a second, I'll be back. <sighs> Got the fire restoked. If you ever come to Denmark, the, the Limfjord IPA from world famous Danish brewery Tisted Brewing Company, my lord. So I sat there holding the axe head thinking, sell it. 
I don't need it, I don't want it. Uh, the axe head was special to me. Five, five years ago, four years ago, um, a man I spoke to in Victoria, in Australia, called Al, gifted me that head. So I figured, one more chance, one more. And just like I told you in the intro, this is not to point fingers or to place blame. You're working with a crooked eye inside, live material traveling across continents, uh, getting exposed to moisture in trains or airplanes or ships. No blame. But I figured uh, that I would go. I figured that I would go with uh, a different maker, and especially, especially, a different uh, source of timber for the handle. Uh, the axe was originally made in the UK, uh, both times in ash. Ash is from the UK is amazing for axes, absolutely amazing. But I don't know what happens, I don't know why, but the axe head on both ash handles came loose. Um, hanging on my axe rack, where I store my axes, all of them, same place, same room, same temperature, same oil, everything. Um, and, and this one just, just didn't work. So, um, I went for a different source of timber. And if you find me laughing, I have a red robin running around the tree. He comes every time I light the fire. I think he's here to keep warm. But if, if you catch me smiling and looking off screen, it's because of him or her. I don't know. Um, my friend, Zachary Hackler, or Zach, aka Keen Timber and Tool, uh, he lives in North Carolina in the States. So from Victoria, Australia, to Denmark, to the UK, back and forth back to Denmark, out into the woods, finally cutting off the handle and thinking, screw it. I decided to ship the head to North Carolina. It came to SAC, we spoke back and forth, both axe makers know each other and only friendly response, we tried something new. Uh, a 25 or 26 inches converted main pattern. Main pattern. Zach, you you have to help me if if I'm wrong. Um, converted main pattern. Zach has a line of heritage tools, uh, lumberman's pattern or a main pattern or a, maybe a Connecticut pattern or a French curved pattern or. He's amazing at handles, absolutely amazing. So, 25 or 26, in, 25 or 26 inches of pure craftsmanship hung extremely tight, fitted with a massive custom-made wedge with uh, some form of, of hard uh, uh, jade, G10, micata, epoxy thing, some kind of hard material inside. It's always when I sit here I can't remember. Saki always presents me with these amazing options and I, I, I just close my eyes and say, you know best brother, do your thing. And it, it, it's, it's always perfect. Um, the bottom of the handle is hickory, laminated, uh, rosewood, and he does a thing called a keen swell. Uh, and you won't know until you pick one up. It's the way he shapes the palm swell. It's made for getting rehung, should it go loose or anything. 
It's made for ergonomics, it's made for... Um, <laughs> he's almost close to the fire. Ah, there he goes. Um, it, it's, it's just made to be used. It's not something you put on a shelf, it's, it's something you take and when the axe goes through your hand it has the ergonomics to stop just the way your hand is placed. Uh, it's, it's, it's a wonderful tool and a wonderful handle. Um, I can, yeah, maybe I can, let me go. This is a Keen's well. So when your hand slides down, it stops with the palm, with the swell in your hand. It's very nice. And the beautiful wedge with the jade micata, whatever it's called. I'm sorry, Zach, but they can see. But I can't. But I can't explain. And the beautiful rosewood. It's very sharp. That's it. That's the story. Stupid axe. But two very kind people wanting to help their friend in Denmark. Stupid axe. Very kind axe makers. <laughs> if you poop on my camera, you're dead, bird. Let me see. Normally I wouldn't do this. But given the fact that you're with me now, uh, I just perhaps need to do this. So, this is you. Hello. And there it is. Running around the woods. Sorry for me not adjusting the aperture, but. And there you go. I'm not making things up. I'm not setting things up a bit, but I'm, I'm not making anything up. I'm just here enjoying the woods and the fire. It's almost 11 and the fire is warm and burning. I like that. And uh, I think I have to build a very solid coal base, very solid, because I'm grilling a steak. Um, grilling a steak, and when the fire burns down from that, having a coffee, maybe taking a short walk, and then packing up and going home. Uh, These videos never turn out the way I planned them in my head because I don't know what to expect coming here. Uh, the thing I was hoping for that I told you earlier um, in terms of getting some action into this video and not just sitting by the fire rambling like an old man uh, was to find some, some, some timber or some materials that, that I could use. Um, and I think I have uh, one more punch up my sleeve.
if you're up for it. So, normally I wouldn't do this having had more than half a beer, normally. But today's a special occasion, special acts, new, uh, new chopping lock, and let's see. Well, that went very well. If I was carrying <laughs> a Grand Force Brooks small forest axe, <laughs> getting through one of those would never happen. Never in a million years would happen. I could do small wedges in tree and make a crack and driving a wedge, but Having access to larger materials such as as this and having a tassie, a keen timber and tool tassie is amazing. Thanks for watching, Zach, if you're watching. Thank you my friend, thank you brother. I've been dying to do this, I've been dying to show you but the weather has been horrible, hor <laughs> horrible, everything here has been drenched in water, now snow, but today the ground is frozen, and it worked brother, peace.